behind the scenes prep. Let's see, let's test the audio. Got to plug it in first. 2,000 years later. Hey, what's up guys? Stick with me in this video. It's going to be a bit lengthy, but I promise you I have some good information. And as the title explains, this one's going to be geared towards everyone that's going to be shipping out in 2018 with the new backpack initiative put out by the Air Force. And shout out to Omar who said my videos were very informative. Thanks for that, buddy. I appreciate it. And he's shipping out next week, so let's give him a big round of applause. <laughs> Congrats, man. He goes on to ask, do I have any tips for packing? So actually, I do. And I was putting off this video for a while because I know it was gonna be lengthy because there's a ton of things to cover and a ton of tips and a bunch of things that I have to comment on. Not only that, packing has totally changed now. Packing for BMT used to require a big bag, tons of clothing, a tons of items, and a lengthy planning process that went into it because you wanted to make sure that you brought everything with. You didn't want to leave something behind and then have to make an emergency trip or have the MTI yelling at you. So in this video, I'm going to go over what to pack, the bag I brought when I went through, the backpack you're going to want to buy after, some extra items that are going to help you, and making sure you're getting the right items that are going to keep you in regs so your MTI isn't yelling at you for any reason other than not marching right. Omar, I hope this is what you're looking for and I hope this helps anyone else watching this video. There are some very important things that came out with the new directive stating what to pack for BMT and after because remember, right after BMT, you're going straight to tech school. The only break you get is the break you're going to get on the plane. So you have to make sure that while you're packing for BMT, you're thinking for that life afterwards. You may get your freedom back, but that doesn't mean that you will have time to buy stuff in that period after you graduate. So it's very important you have these items I'm going to talk about. Also, I hope in these videos you're not thinking this, but I'm not always wearing the same shirt. I have six other shirts that I put out in rotation. I actually wear a new fresh shirt every day and I do laundry every Saturday. I just like to shoot these videos right after I get off of work so that way I get all the video production part down and I can spend the last part of my day editing. So there are some of these things I'm gonna talk to, some of these things I recommend, and there are some things that are actually mandatory per the list given on the Air Force website. But in any case, let's go check out the items that I recommend for packing. is an overview of some of the items and I only have my gym bag here but I'm going to do a separate clip for my backpacks just so I can go in detail with those. First I want to start out with the hygiene product. Okay, That's these items right here. Get a travel size version of this. I don't even know if you're going to have enough time to even think or clean your ears or even floss or use chapstick in the first 10 days or so but you still want these. It's just good to feel clean and not come across as a slob. Now, what we did in my flight is one person bought a big thing of these and we put them in plastic bags and we distributed it to everyone. So my whole flight shared a bunch of, uh, of these big container of Q-tips. So that was uh, really cool. Next for men, this is mandatory. You need your razor and you need your shaving cream. Again, travel size, so get the smaller ones. Obviously, I'm in my dorm room now, so I don't need a travel size container, so uh, I bought a big one, but get the travel size ones. That is the smaller ones right here, and you're also going to need a big one for on display, but that one, you won't even use it. You're gonna leave the cap on if it comes with one, and you leave that for display, and you use the travel size one, but you're going to clean the travel size one every time you use it. In the camera here, I noticed I didn't bring in the extra razors, but bring extra razors and your razor handle. And there's gonna be a certain way you set this up, but that's gonna be in a separate video for your uh, security drawer and your clothing drawer. I recommend the Dollar Shave Club ones, okay? This is the, the lowest one you can get. It only has, I don't know if the camera's gonna focus, but it only has a two blade razor. 
Now, if you've ever seen me in my videos or maybe in the intro, I have really bad razor burn. So the two blade, everyone tells me to get the five blade. It's been the worst experience for me is getting the five blade. So I found these are the best for me is the two blade razors from Dollar Shave Club. I'll put my link in the description below if you want to purchase those. I, I can't recommend these enough. I got the five blade razors, the four blade razors, and the three blade razors. Nothing's worked better for me with bad razor burn than the two blade razors. So that's just my experience with those. Again, start out with the travel sized toothpaste. You're going to buy a big one eventually. You will use the big one for your security drawer and put that on display. And you'll use the small one and you will use the small one and then clean it every time you use it. Just get a manual toothbrush too. Same thing with the razor now that I think about it. Don't get an electric toothbrush, don't get an electric razor or an electric shaver, none of that stuff. It needs to be just the straight manual razor and just the straight manual toothbrush. For the chapstick and the nail clippers, this may be an interesting scenario because I'm going to say bring these with you. They're gonna make you empty your pockets and empty everything out on your bed and you're gonna go through everything and they're gonna take away anything that isn't authorized. This is gonna be anything from maybe some of these smaller items here to something that would be like unauthorized clothing or things that don't match what they're looking for. And this is just bo a bonus right here, but this is really handy, especially if you're like me, you're going through in the winter. I didn't know this, but Texas can get cold, okay? I've never been to Texas other than when I went through Lackland for basic training, but the chapstick was definitely handy. Here's something else that I like to bring only because it's part of my routine. You really, from what I remember, you will not have that much time in the first two weeks until you get acclimated to what your MTI expects you to do and just the normal flow of things for the day. You won't have time to sit there and floss and use mouthwash. I don't even think they're gonna let you bring mouthwash. So that's why I didn't even put it out here. Here's another item. These are my retainers. This was very difficult to maintain only because I don't have permanent retainers when I got my braces off before I enlisted. And so I had to have manual retainers. I don't want to open them up because they look used and gross and the water is hard here where I'm at so there's it's kind of like dried up yeah anyway I didn't get to wear these as often as I would have liked to however they did let me bring them now mind you in the morning when you have 51 other guys rushing into the bathroom you're not gonna have time to shave brush your teeth take off your retainers clean them and everything of that sort so my old retainers I had they actually got really gross because I was wearing them and not cleaning them off and just throwing them in here so I threw them out after I got out of basic and I got new ones. Here is the deodorant I use. At first, I recommend getting a travel size one. I understand in the backpack initiative, they're probably going to give you most of this stuff, if not all of it, and I am guessing they're going to tailor it towards male or female. If you have any sort of prescriptions, this is just to remind me. If you have glasses, obviously you're gonna bring those because you need them, but bring your prescription with, so that way you can give them an accurate detail of what kind of prescription you use so they know how to give you your test. You're gonna end up having to take an eye exam anyway, but this just kind of helps them. So I put my prescription down here. I just rolled it the other way because this actually has like all my information on it. Don't forget your prescription. I wouldn't bring the actual drugs unless if you absolutely need it, in which case it should be in your paperwork that your recruiter put in there for you but don't forget to bring the paperwork for your prescriptions if you are taking them. But let me talk to some of this stuff right here because as I was reading the memorandum that was put out for the new sort of clothing or attire that you should bring with you, there's some huge changes than when I went through two years ago. So I'm gonna go over the basics to bring and then the business casual stuff to bring afterwards and I'm gonna bring out a whole new kind of wardrobe. First, Running shoes, I'm gonna put in the description below uh, the kind of running shoes. They actually show in the PDF file that I'm going to link in the description, the kind of footing or padding, if you will, what kind of uh, texture like they're looking for. So I recommend running shoes that look like this. Pay attention to this detail. Look like this, not the color. This is way too flashy for their liking. Just get something that's black and white or white and black, but mostly more black. That's the color that they kind of like to hit on. Obviously the logo is gonna be white, or like if these things are white, that's okay, but the majority have to be black. Next, a lot of these things I'm gonna to talk to, they're gonna to be in pairs of three. I just didn't wanna bring out three pairs. 
So I have socks here, but bring three pairs. Here I have a blank black shirt. This one I actually cut into one of those long muscle tees, so I'm not gonna unfold it because <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing. I originally came in with this shirt. It was just a blank solid black tee. No V-neck, a crew neck, bring three of them. Now, if your recruiter was trying to tell you something about the underwear you should wear and the compression shorts, let me just clarify some stuff because these are the compression shorts I bought from the BX at Lackland. And I love these things. I don't know what people are complaining about. I think they just got too used to their uh, name brand things, but these are like the spandex kind that kind of suction cup themselves to your body and keep everything in place, guys, if you know what I'm saying. But I love these things. Opt for something that is more solid colored. This was okay. I actually brought this exact pair with me and wore these while I had my civilian clothes before I transitioned to the ABUs. And these are just fine because obviously you're going to tuck in your shirt so no one should see your underwear anyway. Next, these are the compression shorts. You're going to have to wear these when you wear PT gear. You do not want to wear these. I was told specifically by the NTI. Do not wear these in your ABUs. They give you the underwear for a reason. Now I will say this in the same breath that I wore these all the time, even with my ABUs, because the underwear they give you flipping suck. Now there is a trick to the underwear they give you. If you could just imagine if this is a pair of, they're gonna be white, tidy whities exactly how you think they're gonna look. The part, the problem was that this seam here, if you can imagine if this was underwear, it was chafing your body and it was super irritating. So actually, here's a trick trying to do this with one hand here while I hold the camera. This is the inside of your underwear, right? So you can either take it and fold it out so that that part that would chafe you or chafe your uh, waist is actually out. Because again, your shirt's gonna be tucked in. The MTI can't really tell and they can't tell you to take off your clothes as far as I know. But this is the best way. That way it's this, this part right here on the underwear that's going to chafe you. So if you fold it out, you avoid that issue, or you could fold it in. So the opposite. So you'd have it folded in like this, so that there's that material of what would be on the outside of the underwear covering that part that would normally be chafing your waist. So that's the best way i found to uh, mitigate that issue with getting chafed and having uncomfortable underwear. I'm just gonna talk to these pants a little bit. These aren't the pants I brought with to BMT. However, they are very similar. I used to work at a warehouse, if you didn't know that. I uh, was talking about it in my previous video. But they actually issued me pants with cargo pockets and they were um, navy blue. So they were just regular pants like this. They had cargo pockets and they were completely okay. So I would wear the solid black shirt with my compression shorts that I brought with, the Under Armour ones, and the cargo pants, or some pants like this. They don't have to be cargo pants, I just like cargo pants. And that's what I was given at my civilian job and I was too cheap to buy new clothes, so I kept my work clothes. And then in addition to that, wear a belt. Now, the color doesn't necessarily matter. However, I just like to stay hidden, stay under the radar those first couple weeks until you get used to things and you feel more comfortable with your reporting statement and you you don't want the MTI to approach you for any unnecessary reason, I just went with a black belt. So this is the exact one that I had, the same one I used. That way everything is very neutral colored. Notice nothing has any logos besides the shoes and the underwear obviously, but this you won't see and the shoes they expect to have a logo on it. Stuff off to the side. Moving on to this stuff over here. Now these are just some little, little things. This is just, I'd like to have a complete checklist, so I'm just gonna note that bring your keys and your wallet. Bring your wallet with your ID, and you will see in the checklist they have you bring your debit card, and you wanna make sure you have your routing number and your bank account number and things of that sort. So don't forget that stuff. Also, I will say, I got yelled at for this. I'm not gonna bring them up because they're my credit cards, but they're going to ask you if you have any like cash or things that are cash equivalent. That includes credit cards because my argument was it's a credit card. There's no cash value to it. So that being said with cash, I have a $50 bill here because my recruiter when I went through said bring no more than $50 because they will make you lock up the rest. Next I have three watches here. So why do I have three watches? And they're all from the same company too. So where'd it go? Here we go. This one right here. This one 
along with another one, but these are the ones you can expect to find at the BX. When I went through, they said that it needed to be of conservative taste. So to me, this meant conservative, right? It's very simple, it's black, it just shows the time, nothing else, and the date. This is very conservative, very simple, just very straightforward to the point. It's just a plain watch. I seen people, not with these exact ones, but you can, with these sort of watches. Now I love this watch too, the Casio G-Shock. But I seen people with textured ones or different colored ones and they got away with it throughout the whole BMT process. I don't know how they did it. I don't recommend it. Just stick with something straight black. You could either buy it beforehand, like I did with this one. They sell this exact one at the BX there. The one I had before was super colorful. Again, just wanted to stay hidden, stay under the radar, so I bought something simple, black, and conservative, like I was told. I have this one currently. I know this one isn't flattering, it's not all that cool and whatnot, but I wore this thing for basically up until a couple months ago, uh, so for over two years almost, and this thing has been with me through BMT, through tech school, through my first deployment, through TDYs. This thing has been with me everywhere. But the light was dying out and I wanted something else, so I got the same sort of style, but it's more updated. And I think it has an orange light. Right? Well, of course, yeah, you can see it. That one has an orange light and I think this one was green. Or I just changed the time. Yeah, you can see it, that tiny light there was green. Now I recommend getting the watch beforehand because you don't want to be one of those people like you heard before when you're trying to figure it out and you're doing this at 9 o'clock at night and you're waking everyone up and you're pissing them off. So make sure you get your watch beforehand, make sure it's like this sort of style and make sure you know how to operate it just in case it goes off, you know how to troubleshoot that. So I'm going to show you the exact bag that I brought with, but I don't know if you guys are going to be able to keep the bag with now with the new backpack initiative because they issue you a backpack that you will use and everyone has to use it because they like things to be uniform so you won't be able to customize it in any way but you are still going to have a backpack with you to carry all of your items. So when you are going to BMT, you are going to have a bag with you to carry the stuff you're going to have. When you get there, you will change your items from the bag you bring in to the backpack. So I just wanna show you the bag I use, which is actually a really nice gym bag too. And I'm going to show you the two backpacks I have and why I like them the most. So first, here's this gym bag, super simple. It's only got one pocket. I just wanted something that was just not going to be confusing. There's not too many things that are going to stop me from getting what I need inside. It's all black. It's only got the one logo. I didn't get yelled at for it. It didn't stick out. It was super simple and easy to find because it's just this bag. Let's see if I can get a better shot. This is all. There's no, there's no side pockets. There's nothing making it super unique. It's simplicity in and of itself makes it unique. So this bag is probably my, my favorite purchase. Aside from using it for BMT, this is just a really nice gym bag in general. Now I found this at Burlington Coat Factory for like $10 or something, it was on clearance. Couldn't believe no one wanted this. So here's the first backpack I bought. Now I bought this in tech school when it is more likely you're going to need a bigger or uh, more structured bag and I love this thing throughout tech school and some of my time here at Eglin I actually really enjoyed using it until one of the zippers broke then I got pissed and I had to use an old bag So this brand right here, what is this? SOG? I forgot what that stands for. I don't know if you can see the logo there So this SOG bag, this one's really nice. This is going to be a 12-hour bag Something of that nature, but I mean this was really nice so I have all my stuff that I'd go camping with in here, like all these items, I just use this as a backup bag. But I got pissed because one of the, the zippers broke. Where, which zipper was it? This zipper right here on the side. There's like another pocket here that opens up for what would be like an admin area or an admin pocket. And it's actually my fault. It's not the manufacturer's fault because when I was traveling, uh, when I was going home on leave, I packed this thing too tight and I was trying to like yank the zipper and it popped off. I mean, it's not broken. I could actually, looking at it, I could probably thread that back through. But this was actually a good bag. You're gonna find, this is probably the most predominant brand of bag you'll find on military bases because I haven't seen anything other than this 
SOG brand and one other brand. It's like a, I think it's Condor. Condor is the other big brand. But this was a really nice bag to use for a while until that zipper broke. And it has, I never use them, but it has these back straps here, which some people use, they say they're really nice. I never use it because I like my backpack to be able to go on and off real quick. Here's the bag I use now, and I have maybe one, maybe two issues with it. And it actually has really good reviews. And it's not a bad bag, but I would probably use this more so for camping, something where I know I'm gonna use it for a small period of time. But I love this brand. And this is the 511, I believe this is the 24 hour bag. You can see here, like most other, backpacks that have a smaller front bag. Okay, I actually just realized I left a banana in there. Nice. It's actually from today, so it's not too old, but they're both bruised. One of those bloopers that happen while you're filming that you didn't expect. Uh, so I like this one. It's got some Velcro on the, on the front here for a patch, one here for a uh, name tape, and the main compartment, of course. I got my paperwork in there. But this is a really nice bag. I would recommend anyone else uh, they would enjoy using this every day. But I notice when you have stuff in there and you set it down, it has this tendency to kind of, it sits weird and it kind of bothers me. Which is, which is kind of a funny thing because the thing that bothers me happens when I'm not even using the bag, but it still bothers me. But this is, overall, it's still a good bag. I love this brand and I would recommend this backpack for whenever you graduate basic training, maybe a different color. I also wish I bought this in a different color. I thought, I think this is Coyote Brown. I thought Coyote Brown was a bit darker, almost like that sand color that you see a lot of the Marines wearing for their uh, plate carriers. But this is still a good bag. I'd probably get it in black just to keep it uniform because it is in the AFI 36-2903, certain color bags that are authorized. I said I would touch on these things because now there's a certain stipulation in the memorandum that if you are traveling to tech school from Lackland, and your tech school is not at Lackland, you have to dress in business casual. This is what business casual looks like. Now, if you remember from the black belt I had earlier, you could wear that with, with this, okay? So that way your pa pants aren't falling off. And then one of those solid color shirts, you can easily wear that underneath this, but it specifically calls for slacks and a polo kind of shirt the closed toe shoes. Again, not this bright of color, your running shoes that you got there with should do just fine. Do not show up with something like this. While I was putting my clothes away, I found my old gym shoes before I bought those blue ones, but this is the kind of style they're gonna be looking for. So you can see here, it has that same sort of pad on the bottom of the sole, and it's black, gray, some darkish color, the logo is white, this should pass. If you do not have the authorized shoes, they will make you go to the BX and buy gym shoes and everyone's gonna be wearing the same sort of A6. Hey, thank you guys for your time. I did a quick wardrobe change. I'm gonna go do a run real quick. But I hope this video helped. This is the new updated packing list for BMT in 2018. But I haven't gone through it myself. When I went through basic, I had to pack all that stuff myself. Go ahead and check in the description below, I'm going to have a more detailed list of everything to bring. I'm gonna put links for everything that I know you're going to need for when going through BMT. So go ahead, check this list out. Let me know if you've already gone through and you see this video, let me know if there's more things that we need or if there's less things we need and I will make an update to it or help notify someone else. That way they have everything that they need for going to BMT. Thank you guys for your time. I hope this video helped and I'll see you in the next video.